Hi, so now you know uh, that there are other scales that you can use apart from scale linear and so let's focus on one of those and start uh, creating a um, histogram. So we are going to start from this one that is a scatter plot starter that I created for you so that includes the basic things that you have seen me done from scratch many times but we don't need to repeat those every time. So basically I'm creating an SVG, we have the G drawing when I put everything I have a couple axes that have their proper labels that usually when you're starting with D3, you struggle creating those. The mark that we're using in here is points. Um, so I'm putting that as a class and actually this should be something like attribute class point. I just forgot that part. Uh, since we are selecting with a point, then uh, we should be assigning that. And we are adding circles and because of that, we have CX and CY. So we are passing uh, the data.x attribute and the data.y attribute through the x and y scales respectively. And you have here the different values. You could put that on a selector if you want something fancier. Here are the actual effective space for, for drawing that it's the width minus the margins and the height minus the margins. And here are my two scales, scale line, linear for x and y. In here I'm using the full extent. If you want to use just the from zero to something, then you use the max. And we are using the penguins data set just for the example. So if we're gonna create a bar chart or histogram, then um, what I'm going to be doing is forking this. Let's put that into Berkeley so I can share that with you all. Let's call this a histogram starter. And then the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to change this mark point for a rectangle and then let's say then instead of points i'm going to use bars so if you're going to be using bars uh, remember that in svg bars don't have radius although they have a border radius if you want to use they do have x and y and if you draw something like this it's not going to show anything because the important thing they have is actually the width and the height so you do that then now you start seeing some and in there, like one of the things I want to do for the moment, it's let's say that I want to change the fill to be something like still blue. Remember, this is a property like a CSS property, so you can change it with style or change it with attribute, as my boss has been doing recently. Um, either way will work. Um, the other thing is that those are really wide bars. Usually on a bar chart, this one is going to be vertical and the width is fixed. So let's say that the X is going to be um whatever attribute we have in here and then have the width to be uh, uh 50 or something like that and then uh, for the height we are going to have this and if you don't pass any y then it's going to be zero so but for the moment just provide it like that so when you do that then i'm creating a bar for each one of the penguins for the 400 penguins i think there are and then um, drawing like a bar with the length of, of how long it is. Notice how they are going down. So that's going to be an issue. And then the other problem is that we have too many because since this is a histogram, I only want to see this for each one of the species. So if I go and change this into species, then uh, D3 is going to struggle a little bit. It's going to try to keep this, but if you take a look at the domain of this scale, now it's starting to get into trouble. So I could go and say that this is going to be a scale band. That is the one that we know that we can use for bar charts and replace that with this. Now we have two, and the problem is that we are still using D3 extent for this. So they like the way I like uh, producing this, it's that you can just map from the data using the x attribute and then there you go you have like all of the three elements so i guess in the scale band you can provide all of them and then it's going to add it usually i like putting those into a set and then getting the values but it seems like this is working so let's leave it like that um, and then the nice thing about your scale is that now you can see this is working and since we have that as an attribute then my bars at least i have three bars now uh, it looks like three, but I actually am drawing way more than that. If you go and inspect what I'm drawing in there on the code, then you're going to see that I have like way many more bars and what, some are on top of the others. So, uh, when I'm, so to fix that, we can group the data 
So let's create a group data. And remember that for that you can use the three groups. And then uh, just pass uh, the data and how you want to group by. So in this case, it's going to be my X attribute. So if you do that, then you're going to get something like this. Notice that I'm using the plural version because the singular version is going to return a, a set or a map rather. So this one is easier to pass to, 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 to the tree. And then in here, I'm going to create groups data. And the key is that when you pass the group data, you don't have the same format as before. So if you take, for instance, this element and then you do d.x attribute, that is not going to return anything. So my bars went away. So instead, what you could say is, let's say this is going to be my group. And then in my group, I'm going to get my first element. This can have whatever name you want. It's just that doing it this way, you can remember that these come from the grouping instead of the, the datum uh, from the data. And then for the Y axis, then you don't have the Y attribute. So in, since this is a histogram, I can, for instance, count how many penguins are on each species. That is going to be these values. So it's going to be the, f the second element of the array, which is also an array, and then give me the length of that. So when you get something like this, then my problem is that this is still using uh, uh, this element. So let's say that now I'm going to put this count in here, but that's not going to be used in here because actually uh, you want to recompute this. So now let's also compute the domain so we can see if this is working. So now you see this is broken. So because you don't have a count that we on that. So one of the things we can do is that uh, we could go and just say, give me on my group data. And then this is a group data, group element from the group data. And then for the first one, let me see what is the length. And then you see it's going from 60 to 160. So now it's getting better. But remember on bar charts, you should be using things starting from zero. So in this case, I am going, instead of using extent, going to go from zero to the maximum and close here that. And now we go from zero to 160. That's looking better. So now I have this. My bars are coming from the top down and then they're also moved to the left. So I can actually choose to, and, and let me choose, try really quickly uh, something else that I can do is that for instance, since I'm using a bar chart, and scale band, then I can actually pass the band width in here for that. And that is going to distribute the bands. And then on top of that, my bands, I can pass a padding. <coughs> so if I want to separate the bars, then I'm saying like 30% of the space, leave it as, as padding. And then the nice thing about this is that if you change the size of the screen, then they're going actually to, to um, to reduce the size of the bar. So it's actually going to use whatever space you have available in there. So for instance, let's say that we use here a width of 400 or something like that. Then the problem is, but you can see that the bars got redistributed, okay? So let's move this. Uh, so we have the group data, we have the bars. Now the problem is that the bars are coming from the top. And then like the, one, one thing that we can use for helping us in here is that I can actually enhance this one. And let's say that I also want to show like, um, like a text in there. Um, um, let's say, let's call it value maybe, uh, because text seems too similar to the other one, to the text uh, element. So let's call it text. And then text will have two attributes. One is the X. So right away, I know I need to put this in this position times divided by two. And then uh, on the height or whatever position, let's say, with, let's start on zero for the moment. And then the attribute of this. Oh, uh, since this is a text, let's put this on black. And then finally, I can change this text. And this can be the grouping in the position one. And that's an array, so let's get the length. So when you do that, then now you have some numbers. Uh, later, we're going to change that to be 
on top of the other one. So we can also change some other attributes in here, like for instance, to have a font size of, let's say like eight points or something like that. So the number is not so big as you see in there. Okay. So basically you can see that we have 152, 68 and 124. So the problem is that we need to get those bars down. And the reason why this work is working that way is that what I'm passing right now is that I'm saying that the height is whatever my scale is returning and why I say it's going to start on zero. So one of the things you could do is that um, actually I could start the bar from here and then go all the way down. So if I do that, then the way of doing that, uh, if you go and see other examples of bar charts, then you know that it's basically whatever space you have available for your height minus uh, whatever the scale is telling you. When you do that, all of a sudden your scales go down. However, if you see the numbers, uh, this is still messed up. And so as you can see, uh, this is the lowest one, whereas that value doesn't make sense. So actually the problem is that it should be, remember that it was going all the way here. So it should be from here to bottom. So, and that's because of many things. First, because SVG is counting uh, things from zero on the top. And on top of that, remember that we have a scale, our scale inverted. So actually, uh, what you need to have is not this, like you should have Y to start on the scale, whatever the scale is telling you, and the height to be whatever, like from that point. So this is the point where we want the, 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 the bar. So the height of the bar should be from that point and all the space that you have available there. So now that you have that, then we can actually place the text that, so we know where to put uh, things. So now we can know how to place the text right above that, maybe with a couple pixels up. Uh, that was um, the other way around. So let's go the other way. And now we have a bar chart with elements. That's how you create a bar chart in D3. Again, the key in here, it's using a scale band that is one scale that is distributing things. That scale is going to be receiving as a parameter instead of just two numbers, like an array of elements, in this case, all the possible uh, um, species that we have in the penguins. So if you remember, if you if you take a look at what is the current domain, it's three values, and but the range still two values, as you can see in there in the bottom.